Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing good. Today I actually want to talk, not to draw. Recently I had a conversation with a friend of mine talking about the other side of making art, becoming an artist, deciding that you want to become a concept designer, concept artist, want to work in the industry and um, want to achieve a certain thing. I think that's what most people are striving for, like becoming happy or finding something you are enjoy doing while simultaneously earning money with it and support yourself, support your family. And I always thought like me sitting in front of the camera and talking about my past and all I did wouldn't be so entertaining or interesting for you, but that's maybe very subjective from my side. So in 2013, I was very unhappy with myself. I was playing American football, I was playing American football here in Germany and I always wanted to do that and that was great, but at some point I realized, okay, that's not gonna be the avenue I will have for the rest of my life not only because it's not very good for your body and everything else which comes with that but also like in Germany or in Europe generally um, it's not very financially supporting you so I was very unhappy because I was I was spending all my time dedicating to get better in American football so I was training a lot and I was studying simultaneously management specific sport management but I was very unhappy with that because I just decided to study sports management because it felt logical to me to do something um, because I felt like okay I had to study I had to do something and it has to do with sport I'm doing a lot of sport and maybe there's something I can go into the route of being a sport manager maybe in American football or maybe something else I was just very unhappy so and that um, showed in me playing a lot of video games because I felt I had no goal and that's something you really need to have in your life you have to have certain goals so I came home my dad was there so my dad knows me best well and he we had a talk and he asked me if I'm happy and I I was honest with him I was no I'm not and then he told me okay if Maybe if you want to change something, you're 23 now, now is maybe the time and now it's easier than you when you have to change something when you're 40 or 50. I said, okay, you're right, I quit everything, I stopped studying and I started to self-reflect. I basically asked myself what I like doing. What do I like doing every day? And what would I maybe do if nobody would pay me for it? Which sounds a bit cliche, but that's actually how it is. And my brother at the time was studying 3D animation and I felt like, oh, that's kind of cool, but animation is not my thing. Maybe something in games would be cool because I was playing a lot of video games all my life. Just constantly reading, watching videos, researching. And then I was just researching, okay, what particular jobs could you do in that field? I somehow found a video of a Feng Zhu who's very famous, who's a very famous concept artist. And uh, I saw his videos where he talked about the career as a concept artist. He was talking about that and that really lit a fire inside of me. Create worlds, create creatures, characters, environments. I would say if you know me back then you maybe thought I'm not a very creative person but I felt like okay I thought I had I had it what you need to have. That's also what I would like to tell you is if you think you're not a creative person and you think you're not very creatively and that's why like things like art or drawing is not, nothing for you. That's completely bullshit, in my opinion. The area in your brain which is primarily um, functional, your creativity, is something you can train. It's maybe very hard for you in the beginning because you're not used to that. But if you do that over time, um, you adapt to that and you get better and better and better, all the processes through repetition will help you to manifest all, the, all those things and it eventually becomes easier to you. And I was not creative, I was not a creative person. But I also couldn't really judge that because I never tried it before. So I decided, okay, I want to become a concept artist. So then I had to research, okay, how can I become a concept artist? That's actually where everything starts. When you want to become a concept artist, there are many, many different ways to get to that point. Technically, if your goal is, let's say, to work in a studio, you have to create a portfolio with your work to show someone you're capable of working in a pipeline. You're capable of making the art they want, the designer want. They want to see that you're able to create designs. They want to see that you're able to work in certain processes. Um, they want to see that you have a certain quality, that all the fundamentals are there, perspective, 
light, composition, etc, etc. Um, my problem was basically I wanted to become a concept artist, I wanted to become a, a designer, but I, first of all, I, I couldn't draw, I couldn't paint, um, I don't know nothing about design, about working in a pipeline, whatever. I just knew I wanted to do that. So I was basically researching on what all the people I found working working as artists, as concept designer, what were their past, so what did they study. So I was just researching and all the people I found, most of them were studying industrial design. What I basically need to do is um, I need to find college where I can study to buy myself time. And that's also a big point. Should you go to art school or should you not go to art school is really the big question. A very common question is should they immediately apply to a studio or apply for jobs or should they go to art school or not or should they learn on their own. I think that really depends on your environment and your circumstances. From my perspective I was living at home at that time. I knew I had to move out. In Germany here we have something which is called BAföG. It's uh, some sort of like financial support from the government and you get a certain amount of money from the government um, which is great because it gives you enough freedom to really focus on studying while working a little bit on the side. So it's basically paying you enough to pay your rent, pay your bills and have a little bit for food. So for me I, I knew I, I needed some time. I needed time for study. I was applying for game design first so I made a portfolio. Obviously for all the design things in colleges you need a portfolio. So I made a portfolio and obviously I failed because I didn't have a clue of anything. I just made a digital portfolio, it looked horrible. The idea was maybe kind of okay-ish but not so strong and I did digital paintings, only digital paintings and they look all over the place. I can, I can blend them in here um, but basically they all looked horrible. It was all very vague and not very self-explainable. Anyways, obviously failed on that. I spent a lot of time on making that portfolio, on making the paintings and I learned a lot but I failed. So then I applied for product design also here in Berlin and I also got rejected because I only had illustrations in my portfolio because I didn't know. I obviously didn't get to the point where I was realizing um, you need probably product designs in your portfolio when you want to apply for product design. So after I got rejected twice I decided to go to, um, to a portfolio review. So he told me like the drawings and illustrations are not that bad but they're just not appropriate for what you want to do, what you want to apply for because these are illustrations and you apply for product design. So um, I told them that the next thing I want to apply for is industrial design. Talked about it, what I should do. I did everything he told me to do. I did a lot of drawings. I did a lot of drawings and I got in, into industrial design and I was very happy about that because I felt like okay now um, through getting into the industrial design curriculum I was um, able to, to give myself at least three and a half years of growing. I was hoping when I went to college that we gonna draw and paint every day and we going to we will design every day and um, that's how I imagined college studying industrial design. I will learn about design every day and I will draw and paint every day and they will teach me how to draw and I will become this master of drawing but obviously it was like that so um, they gave us tons of homework stuff we had to do in the workshop we had to build stuff because it's just a big part of industrial design which also makes sense but yeah I just didn't enjoy that I just want to draw and paint so I had to find a way to do that and I also had to find a way on working on my foundation skills for concept art because still my goal was to become a concept artist. I also don't want to let down the projects there so I want to have decent results at least. What college for me meant was basically double work. So college wasn't chill for me. College was doing all the projects and doing all my work on top of that. Which letting me getting into college 7 in the morning and staying there until night, until midnight and then going home back and I was drawing in my sketchbook on the way to college. I had 45, 45 minutes train ride. Um, I was drawing in my sketchbook every day, sketching people, sketching, drawing everything. So I was drawing in classes all the time. I found that the fashion designers had on a certain time in the week they had live drawings, six hours of live drawings, which was on the same day when we had our presentations. I sneaked out at the presentation so I was just presenting at first and then sneaked out and didn't listen. Shame on me I didn't watch the other presentations of the other students because I wanted to draw on the live drawing class and we had model poses for six hours which was just amazing. I just enjoyed this time so much. You were basically standing in front of the easel just drawing figures for six hours just looking at the human body and drawing and sometimes I really wish I would have that back. Uh, so my goal setting didn't stop when I said okay I want to study and then I want to go into a studio 
because obviously in between there's a lot of things you have to do. So I said myself, okay, my next goal, I achieved the goal of getting into industrial design from someone who couldn't draw a straight line through hard work and consistently drawing every day for eight to 10 hours, studying. And the next plan for me was getting an internship, working as an intern in a studio, just to get experience, um, get to know processes, get to know the environment in the studio. And that was my goal. And my only goal was to get an internship while I was studying. So I'm ready when the time comes. And obviously also in the curriculum, we had to make a six months internship, which was perfect. And it was almost at the end. Yeah, so I worked basically my butt off and, and I was able to get an internship in a pretty cool animation studio. So they basically did three animations for commercials. It was a very cool studio here in Berlin. I really enjoyed that. I was learning a lot about um, working together with people, but also learn, learning on working very fast because it was very fast paced. My hope was actually staying into that studio after I finished college, just to also have a better base in terms of financially, having the base of um, earning money right from the get go, right from finishing college. That was actually my um, my plan A. Um, but for obviously you always need a plan B. I also made a portfolio and I also started to apply to studios on the end of my studying. And when the time came, unfortunately the studio I was working at didn't have any work for me to do. So it also didn't make any sense for them to keep me. I had to leave the studio and had to go out into the world, go out into the super daunting, scary environment of becoming now this person you want to be, this concept artist, designer you want to be, which is scary. You basically need to find people who trust you, believe in you, and they give you a certain trust and pay you the money for making the work. Eventually I was sending out emails over emails over emails to studios and freelance gigs and I was, sometimes I got declined, sometimes I got no answer at all, then I got some art tests, then I failed some art tests, so so my artist wasn't good enough or I didn't fit the style. Yeah, I basically failed. I, I got declined over the artist and I did a lot of them and I don't need to sugarcoat here anything because that's just the true, the true um, hardship of getting into this industry. And I also had artists where studios didn't even wrote back. So they gave me an artist. I spent a week of doing the art test. They didn't answer afterwards, which was really so while I was doing all that, while I was um, sending out emails and applying and working simultaneously on my portfolio, I also needed to pay my rent, needed to pay my bills. I was working in a, in a sports equipment shop. So I was basically working there 27 hours per week, I think, like five hours per day for five days. And all the other time I spent it on working on my portfolio, sending out emails, doing art tests, etc., etc. I think I had like 80 hours a week because I just wanted to get this job. It took me about eight weeks, so two months. It was really tough. But for me, it felt not like two months. It felt for me like two years. I went to that job every day and even though the people were nice and the job wasn't that bad, I studied three and a half years. I drew and painted 10 hours every day for four years. I worked my ass off to get my skill set and then I couldn't work in my field of job. It felt wrong. I knew I could do it. I knew I could do it. So I just didn't give up. Never, never, ever give up. The funny thing is why I'm saying that I'm getting chills because that's really how it is. And every time I have a bad day, and I'm depressed or I'm I wouldn't I don't want to say depressed because it's a big word I don't feel so much into drawing or painting I remind myself where I where I come from because I came from a point where I was unhappy didn't know what to do with my life on finding art finding design finding the beauty of drawing every day um, into studying design into finding the field I want to work in I'm working in the industry now for four years almost I'm so thankful for everything I had to go through because it made me me the person I am today. It is so much worth it to spend the time to put in to achieve the goal you have, the dream you have. So that's why it's so freaking important to never give that up. And if you have people around you telling you you can't do it, don't listen to that. Don't listen to anything outside of you. You only have to listen inside of you. What is it that you want? If you want to do that, I can tell you and I am the proof Drawing, painting, designing is a skill you can learn. Creativity is something you can train. And I think a lot of people today, they just want things too fast. You have to be aware 
that it maybe takes you five years, it can take you one year, it can take you two years. You can be way faster than I am because your starting point and where you come from is way higher in terms of skill level. So to finish up the story, I was working in this equipment shop. I sent out emails, etc., etc. After eight weeks, I had the chance for another art test for a movie production on an animation movie. And the cool thing, it was actually a studio my brother was working in that time in, in Stuttgart, in the south of Germany. And I made the art test and it was very important to make the art test here because it was a movie production and the production pipeline here was to make a background image or a mood painting for the production pipeline every day. So you basically just have one day, which is like about eight hours of making it um, for one image. So it's very fast paced. And this time um, the artist got accepted. Eventually I got there my first job and it was a project. I think it went over six weeks or something. It was a lot of fun um, working on that production. The movie you can watch on Netflix. Uh, I will also blend it in here. And and yeah, it was really a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I worked with amazing people and I started also to just get my the half of my foot into the industry. And while I was there, I was also going around to all the studios in the area there to talk to producers to say to them, okay, I'm an artist here in the in this studio. I work there on this this and this project. After a couple of weeks, I'm available for more work. So I was already starting to networking. I, I need to say that was just a smart move to do because when I finished a project and I was on my way back to Berlin, I was already in a talk for more freelance jobs and I was about to jump into the next freelance project. A buddy of mine told me that they look for a new artist in Berlin in a studio um, at VUGA where I work right now. And there was actually looking for a character designer, character artist. I um, applied, I also got an art test. I, made the art test, I got into the interview and I also had not only a character design portfolio, I also had an environment design portfolio. What I actually needed even more was an environment artist for the backgrounds. But anyways, um, I got in there and I'm still there at VUGA as an environment artist. The last almost three years at VUGA are such an amazing experience. I learned so much. I've met so many people, so many amazing people. Uh, I'm still growing and learning and I'm just, I would say, at the beginning still of my journey because I'm just four years into the industry. Getting into the industry from the starting point of saying I want to become a concept artist into my first job in the animation production, it took me four years and I was someone who couldn't draw or paint in the beginning. I couldn't draw a straight line, I couldn't do anything. Then I studied it, I learned and I worked my butt off to get there and then I got my first job and it took me four years. So I completely learned a complete new skill. I, I earned myself a new skill set. I learned 3D programs. Um, I learned about production pipeline. I started to be more creative. I was learning the creative process over and over and over. Why I want to talk about that today is because right now a lot of people um, are very depressed because of COVID about the isolation because they maybe don't know where to go with making art, their own art, which direction they want them to go. And what I want to tell you is it is important that you have a goal. It is important that you make yourself certain little milestones you want to achieve. Even though if you're right now in isolation, even though if you're super isolated and you don't know where to go and all you see is maybe everything on Instagram and social media and etc. Completely ignore that. Don't compare yourself. Don't look at, at Instagram or ArtStation everything. Go inside of you. Listen to yourself, what you want to achieve, where you want to work. Write it down. Put it on a piece of paper. Put it on the wall. And then make a plan how to achieve that. And take your time for that. And be realistic. Okay, and you can achieve that. You can do that. And you probably have already a better skill set than I had when I started. And I just want to tell you, you can achieve that with a lot of hard work. You have to be ready to work hard. And the other part is not giving up. Work very hard and you not give up, you will come to the point of achieving your dream, achieving your goal to work as an artist. And it doesn't stop there. The great thing about that, when you become an artist, you can learn even more and you become better. So don't take it also as a final goal, an end goal, a finish line. No, take the process of getting there as your goal because it's all about the learning. It's about the process of making art, making art for fun, okay? And that's where I want to end this video. I hope this video can motivate you to pursue your dream pursuit your art career, do not give up or maybe to rethink your goal setting. I wish you all a lot of luck, a lot of power and energy, 
and mostly I wish you that you enjoy the things you do. If you appreciate the time and effort I spent in making that video, um, feel free to subscribe, activate the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, um, share it and I wish you all a wonderful day. Ciao ciao!